Hi, I'm Candy from Quilt Vine. Thanks for joining me for part three for our orange peel so scrappy sew along. Today we are going to be sewing our orange peels onto our background fabrics. I'll be showing you both methods that we've been talking about, the frayed raw edge and then the raw edge using the um, the fusible webbing. So now for the ragged edge or the frayed edge orange peel applique, last week I showed you how we've glued these on. We've glued them on with either like a school glue or a glue stick. Now we're going to stitch them onto our backgrounds. So I have my regular thread in. I typically use a, a 50 weight. You can use Arafil or I use So Fine by um, Superior. And I got the same thing in the bobbin. And what I like to do is I like to move my needle to the left, I'm sorry, to the right a little bit because I want a, a scant quarter inch, maybe even close to like an eighth of an inch. So I move it over there and I want to hand crank it down to make sure it's clearing my needle. So, I mean, clearing my foot because I don't want to break my needle. Um, I actually have moved that over to a 5.2 to the right. And then we want to make our stitch length shorter. This is extremely, extremely important that you make your stitch length shorter. Because if you don't make your stitch length shorter, after you wash this, it's a really good chance that your appliques will come off after they've been washed a few times. So I moved that down to a 1.2. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. I'm not sure if that's where I'm gonna want it or not. I might move it. But it's gonna be a very, very small stitch length because when we wash this, we want the edge to fray, but we don't want the appliques to come off. You could actually do it a little bit closer to the edge. You know, this is very be forgiving because your edge does fray. The very, very, very most important thing that you do here is you want that stitch length very, very, very short. And that's what I've got here. My stitch length is a 1.2 can maybe go up to 1.5, but I wouldn't go any bigger than a 1.5. See that teeny stitch length? Then the other thing that's really important with this is once you've got this put together and these are washed, you're gonna brush that before you dry it and you're gonna cause that to fray. So that's it for the frayed edge sewing on your orange peels. Last time we fused or ironed all of our fusible orange peels onto our background fabrics. So today I'm going to be showing you how I like to sew them on, the method I prefer to use. And the method that I'm going to show you is just a zigzag stitch using a clear thread. Now I don't use the old monofilament thread. The monofilament thread is like plastic and it melts if you iron it, and it yellows over time. The clear thread that I prefer to use is Mono Poly by Superior Threads. Mono Poly is a polyester thread. Therefore, it doesn't melt when you iron it, and it doesn't yellow, it stays clear. So that's my clear thread of preference. And then what I do is I still, oops, I still have my the regular thread that I prefer to use in my bobbin, I have a 50 weight and that's so fine. You can use, you know, whatever kind of thread you typically use. And I have an open toe foot on so I can see where I'm going and what I'm doing when I'm zigzagging. And I'm just doing a regular zigzag stitch. And I take my width down to about three, which you'll see is a pretty good size width still. And I'll explain to you why I like to do that after I do it. And then the length I have, I left that at, at 1.5. I didn't change that. 
So when I start here, I'm going to start in a little bit and then I'm going to backtrack because if you start out here at the end, a lot of times you have a chance to maybe pull up that corner and we want to make sure we don't do that. So I'm going to start in and then I'm going to do a little reverse. That reversed. And then if you're using this clear thread, it's very forgivable. Now you'll see here, I've got that 3.0 bite in, and then on the right, I want that to just be on the outside of that applique. So let's stitch this on. This is another one of those things where it's good. You can, it's kind of mindless once you do a few. You can have TV on or do something, listen to a book while you're doing this. Like I said, that clear thread is very forgiving. And then we come around here to the end and I do a locking stitch. Now, if you notice when I did up here at this corner, you know, I left the needle down to turn and keep going. And I left the needle down on the outside of, of the orange peel. And then you can see here, I do that, that 3.0. It's a pretty good size bite in. But the reason I do that is because I want to make sure it's, it's biting in there far enough that I'm not catching the very edge of my orange peel because I don't want it to fray. For this one, I do not want it to fray. So that's why I've got that 3.0 bite in. And um, I think, oh, another thing I wanted to say is, you, you know, you could do like a blanket stitch or a blind hem stitch, uh, a buttonhole stitch. If you do a buttonhole stitch or a blanket stitch, you might want to put in, um, you know, a regular thread and then it, it'll really nicely outline it. I'm just showing you the way I prefer to do it. There's many other options and many other ways you can do it. This is just the way that I do it. So here we have the stitching on of our orange peels, either the, the ragged frayed edge or the zigzag with the, um, the fusible. And now you've got your work cut out for you. If you're doing a throw size, you have about 192 of those to do. So get cranking, get stitching. And in the next video, we will start playing with our layout. Thanks for joining me.